Hi everybody, my name is Penny Higgins and welcome to our project. We're calling this Jaws of Life because it has everything to do with Jaws, like this one. I am a paleontologist and my specialty is the study of teeth and the chemistry of those teeth. The chemistry of a tooth can tell us a lot about the environment in which an animal lived. This helps us figure out what was going on in the distant past. This is a plaster cast of a human lower jaw. I'm going to use this, my own teeth, and some other things to give you a quick crash course on teeth. I have a pen. An important part of this project is understanding the teeth that we use to study the chemistry in order to, imp to understand past environments. So right now I'm going to go over a quick primer of mammal tooth anatomy and position. Mammal teeth come in three, sorry, four different kinds. We have our incisors. There are our little nippy teeth, our little hang, 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 big ones in the front. Incisors. Those are the bitey ones. There we go. Those are our incisors. Um, the next set of teeth we have are the canines. These are the pointy ones. These are the ones that we associate with dogs and saber-toothed tigers and even baboons. We have canines. We call them our eye, te our eye teeth. They are just behind our incisors. We have premolars, which are part of the cheek teeth. Because these are the ones where incisors and canines are for taking bites, the cheek teeth are for breaking them up into bits, the food up into bits that we can swallow. The cheek teeth includes the premolars, which in us, we refer to them as the bicuspids because they have two cusps. And then there are the molars. And S. And those are the big permanent ones that we have in the back. So we have premolars, and then we have big, chonky molars. Okay, so we have four different kinds of teeth. These four teeth of these, the incisors, canines, and premolars have, have a baby set. That is, we lose these as we're growing, and they're replaced with much larger teeth, whereas the molars, when they come in, the tooth that you get is the one you get for the rest of your life. And there's three molars, one, two, and three. And this one, the M3, is the magic one. So all of this is important because in our research, we concentrate, focus our efforts on the M3 because it grows, the, the mineral that becomes the tooth enamel starts to, to mineralize after the animal has been weaned. In humans, the M3 is our wisdom tooth. So a lot of us had the experience of having our wisdom teeth start to come in when we were like in high school or college. And then we had them removed because our mouths are just not big enough. But the third molar is special. This is the important one that we need. One would hope with this great big jaw with all of these teeth that we could study the teeth to learn something about the environment that this horse was living in. This is modern horse, so we know where it came from, so we can compare directly its tooth chemistry with the environment that we know it came from. The problem is, the preferred tooth that we would use is the third molar. Okay, that's equivalent to our wisdom teeth. This is a premolar, premolar, premolar. Molar one, molar two, molar three. Here's the same jaw cut apart. And here we can see this is a baby tooth. That's a baby premolar and the permanent tooth coming in. Baby premolar, permanent tooth coming in. Baby tooth, permanent tooth right here. And here's the permanent first molar, permanent second molar, and this is our third molar. 
So the problem is, if we want to work with horses like this, or any large animal, if we're limiting ourselves to the third molar, it's not always there. So what can we do? Here we have an opportunity to compare the third molar with all of the other teeth, including the permanent incisors here and the baby incisors here. This research is important because understanding how different tooth positions record an animal's environment, the environment in which it lived, makes it possible for us to look at other tooth positions and have a whole greater breadth of specimens available for study rather than being stuck working on the third molar. In order to make this project work, we need help. Here is how you can help. There are two things you can do. You can do one or both. The first thing you can do is if you happen to be hiking around and you pick up a jaw of some animal that had died, like this elk, this is a male elk jaw, you can collect this, make note of where you found it, and it just has to be general, I found this in Virginia somewhere, sort of thing. This was in the Appalachians, that's fine. You can collect this, send it to us. This one, I do actually have the incisors to go with it. Here's a third molar. I can compare this tooth to all of the other teeth. That would be super helpful. We need specimens of different animals from all over the place. The other thing you can do is help support the cost of collecting samples and getting them analyzed. Each sample has to be drilled with a dental drill, dental burrs that cost money, put into a tiny vial, and then chemically treated before they're sent off to be analyzed. All of that costs, we estimate about $30 for each sample. If we're gonna collect at least two samples per jaw, maybe more, it adds up pretty quickly. And you can help us with that. We sincerely hope you're able to support this project so we can learn more about how we can use different teeth to understand past environments, past climate change, and so on. While this study seems to be pretty straightforward with looking at just the third molars and the incisors, there's so much that can come out of this project and the collection of samples will probably generate far more data than we can ever possibly analyze, which is great. It's not good science if it doesn't generate more questions than it answers.